right? Uh, I made an, a mistake yesterday when I said that a group element of this form, if you take the derivative of this, you get this. That's not true because this matrix element and this matrix, so this matrix and this matrix are different matrix and they don't commute necessarily. And a lot of the confusion in the formula I wrote out after that stem from that mistake. Um, so I'm not going to prove it, but it is possible to show that the G inverse DG that I wrote down, it is a Lie algebra valued object. So it is in the, it's in the cotangent space of the manifold. And in the Lie algebra of the group, and the, and the Lie algebra. Now, morally speaking, the Lie algebra is something that is, uh, you know, that, that is related to the, to the tangent space. But just because this thing lives in the tensor product of the cotangent space and the Lie algebra doesn't mean that we are taking the inner product of those two guys, right? Because uh, we can always have, for example, if you have a tensor in general relativity which has a covariant and a covariant index, right? That object lives in uh, uh, T star of M cross T of M, uh, but this is not an inner product. And uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to kind of, you know, uh, the, the expression I wrote down for the metric was just something that I just wanted to flash without having gone through it in any rigorous way. But I just wanted to clear up the confusion because I did make a mistake yesterday. So uh, we were doing SU2 tensors yesterday, and uh, we'll try to get into SU3 today, but uh, I don't think uh, we'll do justice to SU3, uh, which is unfortunate because uh, you will come across SU3 more, although not in every mathematical contents in particle physics. I th um, but we want to, build up towards doing the um, uh, young tableaus today, okay? So we want to see how given the different representations of SUN, how we can tend, how, how the product of those decomposes into sums and how to do that sum. Basically how the generalization of the Klebsch-Gordon series works for SUN. So uh, let's start back with SU2 again, and we said that, you know, like this thing where A is one of one and two, this thing is some, is in the, in the fundamental uh, representation of SU2. And the complex conjugate, uh, which I wrote as this, is in the anti-fundamental, but the fundamental and the anti-fundamental in SU2 can be related. And uh, we also introduced some invariant tensors for SU2. These are invariant under SU2 transformations. Um, right. <clears throat> so now, Using these invariant tensors, suppose I have a fundamental representation of SU2. Of course, and we are kind of ignoring, we are, you know, although these are the same thing, but for a lot of, a lot of the properties uh, generalized to higher, to SUN, SU3 and, and higher SUNs, um, you know, um, if you ignore this fact, a lot of the mathematical properties generalize. So for example, given like a fundamental of SU2, I can ask the question, say, what is this object? How does this object transform? We know that 
this object transform as u of a b psi of b. <coughs> now, um, you can show that, well, now if I make the transformation of this guy, then uh, I should get, because it has upstairs index here, so the upstairs indices should transform in this way, b, b prime, u dagger of, say, uh, a prime, a, and then this has downstairs index, so this should be, say, a, c, psi of c, right? <clears throat> but then we see that, you know, these two guys have this index a common, and this, uh, this ob you know, this matrix is the, is the, is the inverse of this matrix, so I can replace this with uh, a prime c. Sorry, uh, bad blackboard technique here. <clears throat> and then I I can see that okay, this thing then becomes uh, u dagger of b prime of b delta a prime c psi of c, and then, then this becomes u dagger b prime, uh, I made some mistake, I'm sure. Uh, b and the b prime is supposed to be the other way. Sorry? B and the b prime? Yes. 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 Oh, right. So this should be, uh, when I take this into account, what happens to the epsilon? There's an epsilon. Oh, yeah, of course. I brought, I, yeah. Sorry, I'm a bit slow today. Ah, there should be an epsilon and uh, with uh, B prime and A prime, right? Yeah. And so let's get so, yeah, B prime, A prime. Okay, good. And uh, so if I do this, then this, F, this A prime makes it into a C. So I get uh, U you dagger b you uh, dagger b prime b and this thing is uh, b prime of c and this is c so if i define this object to be say chi of b then this becomes u dagger of b prime b chi of b, sorry, uh, b prime, prime. right? Um, should that be psi a prime after you define the delta? Uh, psi. You summed, over, you summed over the a prime. Did it make a mistake here? Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, anyway, I mean, don't worry about it. I mean, we all make mistakes. So what I'm trying to say here is that Using this invariant tensor, when we contract it with some of the tensor, it transforms a two into two star. Okay. So, um, so the moral of the story is that if this is, uh, you know. Um, If this is a in two, then this object is in two star. I'm of course ignoring the fact that these two things are uh, essentially the same here in case of SE two, but we'll see in the in the SE three these things uh, are not the same. Uh, so I mean, this is an example of a tensor which is irreducible but higher. But tensors with more indices won't necessarily be irreducible. And let's take an example. Suppose we have a tensor with two indices, an SU2 tensor. This is an SU2 tensor with two indices. Then I can write this as an anti-symmetrized version and a symmetrized version. And then you can check that uh, 
um, you can check that under so under SU2 this thing and this thing don't mix and although I'm not going to prove this fact you know they actually form irreducible representations <laughs> so so suppose I give you a tensor a general tensor and I tell you and so this is not going to be this is not going to be irreducible. So a general tensor, not in general irreducible. A strategy of constructing irreducible representations would be symmetrizing them and anti-symmetrizing the indices. So uh, the other, so here all the ten, all the indices are downstairs, but you can also have a tensor where an index is downstairs and an index is upstairs. Or, for example, uh, you can have things like this. Now this is not irreducible because you know uh, ISU two transformation doesn't mix with this this, but you can then contract these two guys. So you can say you can take this and contract it with, uh, and then you see that this thing will transform as a singlet. So let's do some examples. Did I introduce Young Tableau yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday was a blur for other reasons. <laughs> um, so let's take some examples. So take a rank two tensor of this form. So. Uh, Something like this, where this is, you know, this is a two and this is a two, which is different, independent. You know, we can write that as two tensored with two. Now, <coughs> this thing we can now say we can express as an antisymmetric part. And a symmetric part uh, now now a and b goes from one to two, so this thing will have only one component, so this is going to be one, and this thing will have three components, so this is three, so the two cross two breaks up into one plus three. And this you know from quantum mechanics, uh, where you, if you combine two spin half particles, you get a vector representation and a, and a scalar representation. Sorry. Yeah? What's a singlet? I've never seen that word used before. It looks like a scalar, but I'm... It is a scalar, yeah. So then you need that... Yeah, uh, yeah, um, let me... A singlet is something which doesn't have a free SU2 index. And under an SU2 transformation, it doesn't change. Whereas, you know, for example, a fundamental, this object under SU2 transformation comes with some, okay, so this is, yeah? Should the indices be the same on the left of that arrow? Like chi A, psi B, should they be both A's or both B's? Uh, here? Yeah. For the singlet? No, no. For the singlet. Yeah, this is a singlet. 
So because I've contracted those things. There's free indices there, which is... Right, so, okay, yeah, exactly, yeah, no. Uh, so what I'm saying is that suppose I have a two times two, and I want to construct a one, uh, then uh, I'm the yeah, so sloppy notation. Thank you very much. So that's why. Then you, how do you construct a singlet from a two plus two? You take the Kronecker delta, the invariant tensor, and you contract it. Uh, you use that to contract these indices. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This means that it, the two times two is going to come down to singlet plus something else. And I'm going to single out the singlet part, or what? Uh, right. I mean, so I mean, the thing is that we are so two plus two. This is some, you know, this is some vector space. I'm, I'm, I'm projecting down to a, a subspace of the vector space, which is the singlet space, and that's how the delta is being used. The delta is being used to project down. Okay. So the arrow wasn't like a transformation. Yeah, sorry. So it's two times two star. Sorry? It's two times two star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, thank you. Because that's very important because, uh, of course, it, it, you know, for SU2, they, they, are, they are the same, but for SU3, they won't, but they won't be the same. So that's, that's very important. Thank you. Okay, so. Let's, uh, let's just uh, play a game where we say that uh, if we have so the young, I mean, I'm going to use the introduce some young tableau along the way. So we say that if you have a fundamental, we write it like two, but we represent this as a box with the index inside the box. When it's, uh, you know, at some point we are going to drop those indices inside the box, but for now we keep it. And if you have <coughs> some rank two tensor, with two indices, which are anti-symmetrized. Now, how many components are there in principle here? Sorry? One. one. Because then that's going to be one. And for anti-symmetrized rank two tensor with two indices, I'm going to do two boxes, and I'm going to put the boxes on top of each other. So whenever I put boxes on top of each other, that means that I am referring to a tensor whose indices have been anti-symmetrized. Similarly, if I have a rank two tensor which ha whose uh, Indices are symmetrized. So for SU2, what is the dimension of that? Three. And how do you think we should uh, represent this? Right. So, so that, that statement, 2 times 2 is equals to 1 plus 3, 2 times Two is equals to one plus three. In this box language, can be written as so. Note that for SU two. Something like this cannot exist. Because that means you're anti-symmetrizing three indices, but each index takes only, only the value one and two, so that would be zero.
So next, uh, let's do a very instructive exercise. Let's figure out what is 2 times 2 times 2. What is it? So, um, so I will, so basically I'm developing some basic intuition for the young tableau. And uh, the, you know, I won't derive the whole thing, but you know, basically I'll be switching between tensors and young, young tableau. Basically I'm using tensors because you know, it's easy to see explicitly, but the young tab tableau will come as as a way of encoding the results. Okay. So we want to know what this is. Okay. So we can write this as right. Now we already know what the first part is. You know, this is a a sum, so I can write. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is a singlet. So the third, you know, fundamental representation, you know, multiplying this should just give me this, because this is just a one. This is just a, some scalar multiplying a fundamental. So the non-trivial part, so the non-trivial part should come from this thing. Now what is this? So to see what this is, it's uh, good to actually switch to a tensor notation. So. Uh, so this is a symmetric tensor. I'm just going to put three for three times a symmetric tensor. I'm taking some symmetric tensor. It doesn't matter exactly what symmetric tensor you take, but I'm taking one that's convenient, that's made out of some fundamental stuff. So this is basically what this object is. Now I will write this as, This. Uh, let's see if I. Okay, right. And uh, the first term is the same for all these guys. Here I subtract this this thing which I added, and. Then I subtract that guy. Okay, so uh, now you can expand the first line. So we can expand the first line. And what we find is something with three terms. Okay. Are you phi phi on the second line? Should it be phi psi? Yes. I find six, uh, six terms, and um, do you want me to write it out? I like. 
So this is phi psi c chi b phi a psi c chi b phi c psi a chi c phi b psi a chi c phi a psi b a phi c psi b. Okay, so this is completely symmetric in A, B, and C. Okay. So this is symmetric in A, B, C. So it has how many components? In SU2? Ah, okay, yeah. Out with it. Three. Four. And why? So, so if you have a symmetric tensor in SU3, SU2, sorry. Did I say SU3? SU2, right? Then it, this will always be n plus 1 dimensional for SU2. And that's because you know, one of these, zero of this index can take the value 1, or one of them take the value 1, or two of them can take the value 1, up to n. And everything else is related by symmetry. Okay, so this is always going to be. So this will be uh, four dimensional. OK, what is the second line? The second line is. Now, see that this term and this term, these guys are common, but these two terms are, are antisymmetric in A and C. And this term and this term, you know, this guy is in common. It's also antisymmetric in A and C. So we have something that is antisymmetric in A and C. And then uh, if you now expand the third line, you find that that is exactly the same, same uh, tensor as this tensor. So you don't actually get anything new. You get a different tensor, of course, but, but the indices are different. But the label of the indices are different. So <clears throat> then what we can do is that we can take this guy, which is Antisymmetric in C and A and contract it with epsilon C and A. See? I mean, if you contract it with epsilon C and A, we are not losing any information. Because it's already antisymmetric in CNA. So I contracted with epsilon CNA, CA. Then the free index left is B, which I call, then I call this an A to B. So this shows that this object is. A2. And then, therefore, we can write that
Now, you might say that, hang on, this is very confusing. You write some box thingy, which has three boxes, and you say it's four-dimensional. How the hell am I supposed to memorize that? You know, so at the end, when I actually, after motivating with some examples, I will come to the formal rules of Young Tableau, and I will give you the algorithm for, for computing the dimension of a, of a young, of the representation that corresponds to a young tableau for SUM. Okay. I'm just kind of building this thing up right now. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just confused. Like, to get the A to B, you have to contract with an epsilon. That wasn't part of your original tensor. Uh, no, it's not part of my original tensor. You're right, yeah. So why, I mean... Uh, very good, yeah. So... Um, no, no, that's fine. So what I'm saying is that, you know, you have, suppose you have some object which is, uh, say, what do you want to call it? Um, um, A, which is, say, three indices. It's, a, it's an object which doesn't have any obvious symmetry. Say, uh, it is C, A, B, but... It is antisymmetric in the first two indices. Okay. Wait, what's that? Is in oh, sorry, ACB, right? Yeah, yeah. Like ACAB is equal to minus AACB. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry, my brain is a bit slow today. Right? So, uh, <clears throat> so now, I mean, if I now compute how many components it has, uh, it can have, say, one. The, you know, the first index can be one, right? And the second index can be two. And the third index can be either one or two. So it can be one, two, two. Now, the first index can also be two. Uh, okay, the first index can also be two, but because it's antisymmetric, the second index must be one. And the third index can be one or two. And similarly, one, two, one, right? One, two. Oh, sorry, yeah. So, uh, this is two. This is one. Two, 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 one, two. Yeah, two, one, two. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> so now you can ask, you know, how many of these guys are actually independent, right? Well, we have two, one, Two, but that's just the negative of one, two, one. And we have two, one, one, but that's just the negative of one, two, one. Right? So this thing has actually only two independent components. So it is more efficient for me to write this as, as something which has only two independent components. And uh, so I could, have, I could have just written it like the way it is. But if I contract it, because the, the antisymmetric indices, if I contract it with the epsilon te tensor, it, it, it kind of shows clearly what I'm dealing with. Okay? So. You're always just counting the number of independent. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. All right, so uh, so again, something I said before, but let me reiterate for SU2. This thing will always be n plus 1. So now that we figured it out, we can answer that question over there. 
What is 2 times 2 times 2? Well, 2 times 2 times 2 is 4 plus 2, and there was a 2 coming from before. So let's move on to SU3 tensors now. Tomorrow we'll talk about SU4 tensor. I'm just kidding, yeah? Um, so in the top right on the yeah. top board, when we wrote out like three chi phi psi, we got these three lines. Right. We said that the first line was a copy of four, and the second line was a copy. Two. Why don't we get an extra copy of two from the third line? So the third line. So if you if you write it out again like this, yeah, and you know you you, you contract it, you get exactly the same. It's, it's you get the same tensor. So why don't we get an extra copy of that tensor? Yeah, you, I mean, uh, you, they, those two those two live in the same vector space, so they add up. If, if you were getting like a, a different combination of these guys, which was also two, that would be a separate two. In that case, it'll be anti-symmetric between like B and C instead of A and C. Right? Yeah, but, but they're, they're just indices, so they're just, okay. yeah. So for SU3, We have the fundamental, so this is the fundamental. And uh, three star, which is the anti-fundamental. For SU3, the generators that you get from doing a complex conjugation, these are not related to this by unitary by a similarity transformation. So, so no C's such that T A tilde is C T A C inverse, unlike SU2. So we can then say, what are the invariant tensors? These are the three-dimensional, the, the Levitivita with the three uh, indices. And again, delta AB. Now let's consider. Phi AB, where a tensor with antisymmetric indices. So, how many components does it have in three dimensions for SU3? Three. Three, right? So, we might say, okay, what kind of object is this? Is it a three or three star? What do you think it would be? It should be three. Any other? Well, the other option is to be three star, right? <laughs> and uh, remember that we, over here, we showed that uh, for SU2, if you have something like this, which is was a two, when we contracted it with an epsilon, it be, you know, this whole thing became a two star. You can do exactly the same thing with this guy and take an epsilon and, uh, okay, let me just 
write this uh, separately. So by contracting with an epsilon a, b, c, you can show that this thing is a three star. So in other words, I can define, say, something with an upstairs index and this is going to be a three star. So something like this is going to be a three star. So this motivates that we express the three as box as before and that's because you know it's going to be something like this. But the three star, you know, uh, this is something like this. So, you know, you can invent a notation where you write the box above, a above the box, or you can use the fact that something like this can actually be related to something where the indices have been anti-symmetrized, and then say that, you know, this is actually going to be something like this. Yeah? Um, how do you know when you contract the first tensor with the anti-symmetric tensor that you get something that's the same object? Uh, Sorry, which one? So how do you know when you contract phi anti-symmetric BC with the epsilon that you get something that's the same object as phi? Uh, same object? How it transforms. How it transforms. Okay, I mean, we can do this. So if I take this, right, and let's see how it transforms, right? Then, uh, you know, we have A, B, C, phi of B, C, and if I transform, it's, oh. it's going to have five unitary matrices. Three of them will be U daggers coming from this guy. Two of them will be U's coming from these di these guys, and and of those th of those two from U daggers will um, you know <coughs> get rid of the U's coming from here. What you left behind is a U dagger, and that's all. Yeah. All right. So. Remember that for SU2, this thing was a 1, right? Because for SU2, you have two indices. If you anti-symmetrize something with two, in, which can, say two values, the index can take two values. When you anti-symmetrize an object with two indices which takes two values, you have only one component. But in this case, that's not the case. So can someone guess? What would be the singlet of SU3? Well, how, how many boxes should I write? Three boxes in a column. So that should be this thing, right? All right, let's, let, let's do some uh, examples of SU3. Examples. What is this? <coughs> so you take some tensor.
So for SU3, this has, as we just saw, three, it's three components. So this has how many? Six. Okay, so So this has three components, so uh, I write it like that. And uh, the sixth component is this. Remember for SE2, this, was, this had three components. And this I write as three times three, but as we learned, this is actually three star, and this is a six. So let's do another one where we, instead of three, we say three, three star. And, and let's increase the stakes a little bit. And we say that psi A now is an up quark, a down quark, and a strange quark. So what we are doing is that we are taking a fundamental of you know, a triplet of quarks, and three star is then the anti-quarks. Okay. So you will find that uh, when you do a standard model and QFT that you know, um, the anti-quarks, uh, anti-particles, you know, they, they, they belong to the conjugate representation. So uh, just keep this in mind, and then what we will find here are essentially the mesons that are formed by quark anti quark pairs. Right. <clears throat> okay, so. <clears throat> Now, <clears throat> so this thing can be expressed as, let's uh, use psi, psi b. So this is my box times uh, this thing. <clears throat> so if I contract this thing, I actually get a singlet. And it, so it turns out that that's the only thing I can do. The singlet transforms trivially. So there's, so that is obviously a, uh, a irreducible representation, trivial but irreducible. But this you can't really reduce anymore. So what we do is that we take the trace, sorry, uh, we take the trace out of this guy. So we take, uh, so this is a, a dimensional representation, and this is the the one dimensional representation. Second term where the delta should be AP. Second, this one. Yes, because delta you are contracting delta AB with C. Right? No, I've already contracted CC. This is, a, I'm just putting this delta so that this term and this term transform in the same way. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, to see that this part it is actually uh, um, right. 
So how do you represent the eight as in terms of young tableau? <sighs> I'm going to claim that the eight is represented in this way. And uh, so this won't be very, this would be a bit heuristic, uh, but I hope you bear with me. And the way to see it is to kind of see that, okay, we have some psi A and some psi B, but the psi B can be written as, okay, sorry, um, it's actually easier if I write the psi B first, okay, if I write this, if I do this, now this is in the three star, which means that I can write this as, say, B, C, D of some object which is antisymmetric in C and D, and like this. So, um, however, this thing I can call, it's this object, and this is some box. So, the important thing here is that if I look at this part within the brackets, it is antisymmetrized in these indices, but it's actually not symmetrized in these indices. And that's something we'll see that in young tableaus where we have, you know, which is kind of not a pure column or a pure row, the indices along the <coughs> column will be antisymmetrized, whereas the indices along the row will not necessarily be symmetrized. Um, so this basically tells us that this thing will be Can uh, read Jones for for uh, slightly more details. Now <clears throat> we can now look at this more carefully. So, or what I mean is that I can now take these guys, plug them in, and work out what the what the matrix element, what the different components of this tensor is, because it's a rank two tensor. Because it's a rank two tensor, you can actually represent that as a matrix. And it turns out that therefore the the entries of these of this rank two tensors are different mesons that are found in the physics of strong interaction. So uh, if I call that tensor, say, say P of A, P of AB is psi A, psi B, Third. Then it turns out that this is some um, pi naught. So you can look up their core contents. I won't uh, write them down here. These are the wave functions of the mesons. So 
So, so that's a historical uh, application of three times three star. You can also say, okay, what if I take three quarks and multiply them together, three, quark, three fundamental representations of SU3, uh, you should get, for example, the, ne the, the neutron, you should get a proton, and you should get a bunch of other stuff. And uh, so, so it's physically interesting to ask, what is this? <coughs> I'm not going to derive this right now. Maybe something we can do in this tutorial today. But this is some, I'm just going to give you the result. And here you get two different eights. And uh, this is the 10. This is eight. The 10 is very famous because uh, it contained a state that will have not been observed when this was predicted. And using, so of course the up, down quark, up, down, and strange quark, they don't have the same mass. They are kind of approximately the same, but using quantum mechanics and some heuristic argument, you can predict their masses to, uh, to certain accuracy. And it's only after Gelman you know, worked this out and showed that there should be this 10th particle, which he called omega, it was actually discovered. So, so this um, group theory of, of SU3, all this tensor analysis, it's really put uh, quark on the map. Well, it, basically that's how we discovered I mean, there were even after, even after that, people were talking about whether quarks actually exist or not. Uh, and then, you know, in I think in high energy physics, you know, there are there is actually evidence that quarks exist. Um, so now, wouldn't it be nice to have an algorithm for generating the series instead of doing this painful tensor manipulation? Because the tensor manipulation, it seems like you're just pulling stuff out of thin air. Sometimes you have to guess, oh, this is how, uh, and that's really formalized in the Young Tableau. So I'm going to give you now the rules for Young Tableau. Not, I've just motivated how, what, what, where Young Tableaus come from. Now I'm just going to give you how to compute the dimension of Young Tableau, how to work out the Klebsch Gordon series, and stuff like that. And I don't think I shall get to SU3. So, so these are Young's table. So, first, illegal. And this is taken from Jones. So, if you want to read in more details, you can look, look at Jones. Illegal Young's tableau. <clears throat> okay. So, in. In a legal young tableau, the length of any row cannot be larger than the 
row above. And we stack the young tableau such that we align them on the left. So, so a young tableau should look something like this, a, a, a one that is uh, allowed, i.e. legal. If you draw a young tableau which is not legal, the tableau police will come and put you in a jail whose bars are made out of legal young tableaus. Sorry for that bad joke. Uh, so what is not allowed is stuff like that. So this is not allowed because this thing is longer than this thing. This is allowed. <clears throat> so the number of boxes in a column for SUN cannot be more than N due to antisymmetry. So if this was, say, SU, this could not be SU3 because the tensor that this young tableau would represent would have four indices which are antisymmetrized, and for SU3, that would give you zero. So later we shall see how to build up the Klebsch-Gordon series from a given initial set of you know, uh, representations. But for now, suppose we have a young tableau with n boxes. So uh, this is number three. You know. Suppose we have a young tableau <clears throat> with corresponding to to a rank N tensor. So uh, <coughs> uh, OK, that's not the right way of putting it, sorry. Suppose we have a young tableau with n boxes, uh, say, okay. with n boxes, and 
Right? And we have a rank n tensor from which we have to construct this representation. Construct the irreduced representation corresponding to the tableau. Then we do something like this. What do we do? What we do is that let's let's take a particular exa like a example. Suppose this is the tableau that we have. So it is some e rep. So this has got how many boxes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we are told that this e rep arises from doing some kind of projection on some tensor which has eight indices. How do we go, go about that? So what we do is that starting from left, left to right here and left to right here, we fill out these uh, boxes with the indices. And then what we do is that we symmetrize first. So and then 3A, we first symmetrize along, uh, symmetrize the indices which lie on each row. So, so here we have one, two, three, four. So what we say is that, okay, I'm gonna take this and then I'm going to symmetrize A1, A2, A3, A4, and then I'm gonna symmetrize A5, A6, A7, A5, A6, A7, and then I'm going to symmetrize A, A8, which of course means I'm, because it's only one index, I don't have to do anything. So once we have done that, we have to symmetrize, anti-symmetrize the column. <coughs> then we anti-symmetrize the columns. So, uh, so basically now we have A1, A5, A8. So we make, if you like, we take this guy and we say, let's take, uh, well, this doesn't have to be SU3. So um, yeah, that, that you have to, Antisymmetrize these three indices, and then antisymmetrize these two indices, these two indices, and this. You know, again, A four. You don't have to antisymmetrize because it's by itself. Um, the effect, the net effect, is that the symmetrization that you did first gets lost. Uh, is that symmetrization is is. Uh, The anti-symmetrization um, tells you that, you know, means that this indices may no longer be symmetrized. The symmetrization that you did initially, some of it will be kind of, you know, uh, ruined by the anti-symmetrization process, okay? And so uh, once you have anti-symmetrized this, so, you know, then you,
then you can be assured that the resulting tensor you get will correspond to the young tableau that you drew, drew out, drew down. Now suppose I give you a young tableau and say, okay, what is the dimensionality of this young tableau? Yeah? Um, so the symmetrization, for example, says if you switch A1 and A2, then you still get the same tensor. And the anti-symmetrization says if you switch A1 and A5, you get the, the... Minus of that. So aren't those kind of independent of each other? Like, you never have two indices which are simultaneously in the same row and same column, right? Uh, yes. So you can have both of, both A and B exist simultaneously. And then how would the symmetrization get lost? Uh, how this... Mm. I think, yeah, I mean, so you are... Right, so if I was doing only one anti-symmetrization, it wouldn't get lost, but I'm getting doing more than one in principle. And then, you know... Uh, so for example, you know, this thing will basically now A2 and A6 would be antisymmetrized. And then, uh, you know, uh, so that would, actually, that would actually ruin the, the symmetrization of A1 and A2. But if it was just one, it wouldn't. I, I think you have to really do some, like, some <laughs> explicit calculations to see that. Um, but is it true that if you do just one that it wouldn't be ruined? I think for like would, SU2, that's my guess. One, I think it would be yeah. ruined too. No, it would be ruined. Yes, right, yes, right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's a very good point. So yeah, we we did do an example where we did uh, the 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 where we did the S the three index SU SU two and we wrote it as a symmetric and. Uh, Right, so uh, this was something like this, right? And uh, in that case, no, in that case, this was anti, yeah, this was anti-symmetrized, whereas this wasn't, right? Yeah, exactly. That's a good example. Um, okay, how do we? The other thing too that is interesting that I'm, uh, you know, I don't really know how to prove this, but I read read about it in it, uh, in, in Jones. But I think it's worth mentioning is that the Young tableaus form irreducible representation of the permutation, and that's an interesting uh, observation. Somebody in some math course will prove. So how do we compute the dimensionality? So that's uh, point number four is how to compute the dimension. So, so let's take a tableau for example, and let's take this to be SUN, because you have to commit to a particular group. And then we form a quotient like this. 
So basically, I'll get two numbers, and I'll have to form the quotient of these two numbers. And on the left, right, left top corner, I write, if for S1, I write n here. And as I go down, I decrease by 1. So this is n minus 1. This is n minus 2. This is n minus 3. As I go right, I increase by 1. So this is n plus 1. This is n plus 2. As I go down here, I decrease by 1. N n minus 1. And here in each box, I look at the right and the below. How many boxes are there on the right and how many boxes are there below? How many boxes are there on the right? And I write and they add 1 for this box. So here it should be 1, right? So let's, how many boxes, what should I put in this box? One, because there's one box on the right, no box on the right, no box on the uh, below. How many boxes on the right? One, one below. So I should write three. What about this one? How, what should I write here? What about this one? What should I write, write here? Boxes, not the, not the numbers. One, two, three, and four for the box itself, right? Right. And this should be one. This should be four. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. So uh, <coughs> let's do for SU3. Now let's do this for SU3. Sorry. Um, oh, we still didn't get the dimension. Sorry? We still didn't get the dimension of the first one. Yeah, um, that's, you know, basically when you do this, I'm going to show how this works. Yeah, you have to multiply something, I forgot. But... Yeah. So this would be the dimension. Like, you, you have to write, you know, basically these numbers. You have to write the product of all these numbers divided by the product of all these numbers. and and you know, do that, and and that's it. So, for SU three, it's easy to see that this is going to the first. This guy is going to give me is three two four divided by one two one. So in the numerator, I have three four two. In the denominator, I have three. So I have eight. So the last thing is how to expand given, suppose I, I give you, yeah? Yeah, you calculate the dimension here. OK, so I'm, I'm doing SU3 here, right? So I say, OK, I'm going to write 3 here. And as I go down, I'm going to decrease. So I get 2 here. As I go right, I'm going to increase. So I, so I, I have 4 here. And over here, I, you know, on the denominator, I say, okay, how many boxes are below this? I understand how you fill in the boxes. I just don't understand the computation you just did. Oh, okay, right. So, uh, so then what we say is that this is the numerator. So in the numerator, we have three. We have four times two. In the denominator, we have three times 1 times 1, and we work out what that is, and that should be the dimension, OK? Yeah? Are you sure it's just in the multiplication of numbers? Because I remember learning something about certain rules that some columns will go with some rows, and then you add some. Maybe that's uh, Maybe I mean I mean you know I've seen this being described in different ways in different okay. books. Could that be for things other than SUN? Maybe could be. So I mean I, I it, it was a long time ago. yeah it, no I mean you know I like I'm giving it the most basic thing. I mean I think there are probably uh, you know 
other ways of describing the same thing, you know, like hooks and stuff like that, you know, and, and those kind of things. Do you think about how they're, like, when you have two of them, how you multiply them, how you add the boxes one to the other? Anyway, uh, you know, like, uh, yeah, I mean, this is, you know, different people describe it differently, and uh, you, uh, that I'm sure it's possible. Um, okay, so the last thing is, uh, how to expand the Klebs Gordon series. So suppose we are given two boxes, how do we uh, expand them in terms of irreducible representation? And this is really the, probably gonna be the toughest to explain. So how to expand the product of to Tableau as a sum of Tableaus. So we have, for definiteness, let's take uh, something like this. So this is T1, and we are multiplying with this T2. So the first rule is so label. The rows of T2 by A for the first row, so B for the second row, C for the third row, get the idea. So I have, I said this is A, this is A, this is B, this is B. Second is add one box from T2 to T1 at a time such that, uh, okay, at a time, uh, starting from starting from the top row. So making sure at each step. The following are satisfied. following rules are that T1 must be sorry, uh, make sorry. so <clears throat> okay you start from the top row and then you work down okay so you start with, with this row you take this guy and this guy and then you work down and let's so at each step, you have to ensure that T1 must be a legal 
young tableau. At each stage, each stage. Uh, maybe I should not call it T1, but the first tableau. Um, okay. Okay, make sure. I think what I mean is that uh, at each stage. Uh, Great. So I think I think it's each tableau must be a legal young tableau. Uh, So more than one box with the same label A, for example, same label must not appear in the same column. So for each box, assign a number, assign a, a number, say n of a, which is the number of a's above and write to it similarly assign b similarly you know, assign a number n b in the same way And if that box, and that box in the end, the number of A's, N A must be equal or greater than N B must be equal to N C. If that is the case, then you know you're you know that tableau is allowed. And uh, if Uh, so I should really say this is like uh, the numbering system is this should be A, this should be B, anyway. and this should be uh, the one, two, three, of which are then number C is if if two tableau are the same, then they are counted, they are counted the same if their labels, the labels A, B are the same. If they're not, then they're distinct. Otherwise, they refer to distinct 
P-Reps. And lastly, cancel or, or just cancel or just like erase columns with n boxes for s u n because they're trivial so for example when we did s u 2 that thing we found that was actually just a fundamental because i can just you know get rid of that so this is our these are our rules if you guys give me like a couple of more minutes i can we can do a, an example no yes no shall we do an example Uh, this is a uh, again taken from Jones. I uh, any mistake is because of him. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and you know some of the stuff we do, we have done before. Like for example, the you can you can work those out as well. And. Uh, Right, so uh, example. So for SU3, we want to figure out what this is. So first we do is that we say, okay, this is going to be A, this is going to be A, this is going to be B. So then what I do is that I take first A and I, I add on to my first tableau in all the ways that is possible and legal. So the tableau has to be uh, each tableau has to be legal, but also uh, there is the number of each box. I can associate a number n a, and that number has to be greater than or equal to n b. But so far, I'm not really messing with b, so I don't have to worry about it at this stage. So then uh, the next step, I take the next A and I have now four boxes here. And uh, I have Okay, sorry. Um, okay, I'm not going to organize in this way. I'm going to organize it in a different way. So first, what I'm going to draw is that I'm going to work out how, in the next step, how the diagrams that this guy gives. So I can take this A and add it here. Or I can take this A and add it here. Or I can take this A and add it here. Okay. 
and then outside we have just B. And now I, I, I look at what are the stuff I can get from this guy. From this guy I can get These are the only two things I can get from this guy. Times B. And then the last guy uh, is uh, I have A and uh, this thing. And then I can add uh, <coughs> this thing, but I cannot add a below this because that would give me four boxes. That's not allowed for SU3. And then the next step is to multiply th these out. And you multiply when these out, you know, because now we have to worry about the different numbers n a and n b for each of these boxes. Uh, some of those things will be disallowed. So, um, so for example, if I now take b and put it. Uh, I take B and I put it here, then uh, hmm. Oh, yeah. So from the first one, I should be getting So I should be getting this and uh, this. But uh, if I now say I want to put the B here, So I have, say, A, A, this thing, and then B here. That should not be allowed. Sorry? Well, according to your definition, it should be exactly that. Yeah, it should be allowed, right? According to my definition. But my notes say. Uh, I think, don't think either of them should be allowed. The box, the box with the right box. The second one should definitely not be allowed. Huh? No, because the box, the middle box with the A in it has a B to the right of it, which is, so NB is one, but there's no A. Is one. Right, right, that's why, yeah, I think so. So neither yeah. of them are allowed. Right. So this one is not allowed because it has no A's on the right and one B on the right. right on. So, the, so the value for NA is less than the, the value of NB, but... But for this thing, uh, yeah, but for, for this thing, you know, the, 
So how do we assign NA? Sorry, <coughs> the way we assign NA, we count the number of A's above and right of it. So here and is or, I mean. So over here, if I look at this, it has two A's above, like, you know, uh, it cannot be below. So, so, so this, this box will have NA equals to two, which is greater than what the NB value is. So, that, so this is allowed, whereas this would not be allowed because this has, uh, because this box has value, NA value is zero, NB value is one. So, okay. Yeah, so. Uh, Then we get uh, from uh, from the second term. Uh, so. Okay, so the other terms that you should be getting. Is this let me I think I skipped a step and which I okay, I see right. So yeah, the, this is the this is what's creating the confusion uh, is that um, this guy and this guy are the same tensor, and uh, and this guy and this guy are the same guys, and this thing and this thing are the same. So. Uh, so there should be an intermediate step here where I write this tensor plus this tensor plus this tensor plus this tensor. So there's a bunch of terms which, you know, they will be. And so then I'm, I'm multiplying. Uh, so, so let's just do that. <coughs> so I'll be done in a minute. Uh, so we are multiplying. This plus this this right and uh, and that with B and uh, if you now. Use the rules, then um, you get A A B plus B A A, and then uh, from this guy. You get uh, A, A, B, right? And uh, here you get A, A, B. And another one which almost looks the same. But uh, is now A, B, A. And A, A, B.
So because we are doing <coughs> SU3, uh, anything which has three columns, we are just going to cancel that. And this is going to give me one. So the final result is this thing is going to stay. And this will be like that. This guy also stays. And this thing is a A. And uh, this thing is a different, they look the same, but they're different tensor because the labels are different. This is A, this is B, and this is 1. So this is a 27 plet. This is a decuplet. And uh, this is Yeah, it turns out, I have not confirmed this. This is also 10 star. And then these are two different eights plus one. Okay. Um, so I think I'll, I'm going to stop there.